All right, all right. Let's see. If, is this working right now? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me in the chat? Just, you know, just give a shout out. Sweet, all right, cool. That's awesome, that's incredible. This is my first time test trying this, of course, as you can tell. I am well prepared for this uh, review. I'm gonna be just doing the review just today, just myself. Uh, if any of you guys wanna join in, be sure to let me know. Be sure to let me know, that'd be awesome. Uh, you can just let me know on Skype or something for those of you who are here with us today. Uh, if anyone's not from the RBL, the RBL is a league in which 16 teams now all incorporate together and sort of duke it out to uh, come out on top, I guess. I guess that's what you really do for a champion or a league like this. So, kudos to Jope, coach of the Minnesota Eon Twins for winning Season 2. He went against Crump and beat not only Crump, but he also beat the previous champion Alex Louie and he even beat myself which I'm I'm all right about it I, I got over it I got over it but today we're gonna be doing some reviews of the RBL teams this week so that's gonna be including the New York Cacleons, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Bavarian Beedrills, the Philadelphia for Alligators, the Oakland Typhlosions, the, Tyranitar, the Tacoma Tyranitars, the Kentucky Crobats and the Toronto Chestnuts. There we go. Hopefully I got all of them right. I'm just looking at the abbreviations and just going off of my memory. So here we go. We're just going to get started right away. Those of you who have just joined us right now, welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll just get started right away. So we're just going to move on to the New York Cacleons, coached by Vade's Wilkes Booth, aka Vade. Just Vade. What's up, Vade? You around? You around, man? Anywho, he's going to be drafting his... We'll just go over his uh, draft first. So his draft is... His very first pick was the Mega Blastoise. So that was a UU pick. Uh, so that meant he had first dibs on OU1. And then in OU1, he picked up his Mew. OU2, Infernape, Rotom Wash, Mega Blastoise, Nidoqueen, Noivern, Romatisse. And as you guys can tell, if you can read... That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so this is the team that he he put together. And this is a very different team from the RBL season <laughs> in League B, his very first season. And this is a powerful team. The Mew complements his blast by so much. Uh, make sure he's not going to get any rocks or spikes or toxic spikes because Blastways, Mew, what? Defog, Rapid Spin, that's not a thing. Mega Blastoise hits incredibly hard with his Mega Blaster ability, and it just that's just power, and it pairs up so well with Mewtwo. Then he picks up the Infernape, and that is that's 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 scary. Can I join the battle? Yeah, maybe you can join in the battle if you stay active in the Reddit community. Uh, you can you can probably join there. There's there's hopes for that. Anywho, uh, we'll get back onto my train of thought over here. The Mew and the Infernape are so nice. He's He has two really, really fast mons, two really complement Mega Blastoise. Uh, Mew is 100 base speed. Infernape is, I think, 115. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a really fast mon. It hits really hard. It's really unpredictable. And it just does so many things incredibly well. Like, Infernape has... You can choice spec it. You can choice ban it. You can choice scarf it. I'm... This, this team is already unpredictable, the top two picks. Mega Blastoise is sort of a, a niche, it does what it does. But Mew and Fernape, you gotta go into the battle, see what's gonna happen. Until then, you can really, really find out and really tell if your prep was um, all that and more. Then he picks up Rotom Wash, which is, once again, another really great defensive Watermon. Uh, Rotom Wash is a dual screener, a real annoyance. Uh, you can choice scarf, you can choice bandit. Yeah, you can do a lot. The Reckleons, my squad. Yeah, that's right, Vade. This is your squad over here. This is a team that I really like just because it's so well constructed. I do believe Vade had either second or third 
second or third pick, something like that. So, the UU pick that he picked up first, of course it was his Mega Pokemon, he picked it up really really early. Uh, some strategy into that, with this he was managed to be able to get the Mew, but then he picked up the Nidoqueen, which is an incredible pick. Six pick, okay, right there. Uh, thanks for that, Vade. I, I can't remember that. But anywho, uh, his Nidoqueen is an incredible pick. If you all remember what happened from last season with Crump and Nidoking, Nidoking tore holes through all sorts of things. Like, that was his wall breaker. Nidoqueen isn't as powerful, but it's a bit bulkier, and it can do the same thing. And I think Nidoking complements this team so well, too. Uh, especially having, like, Rotom Wash, Mew, and Fernape. You've got, you've got things to really, really back it up. Then he picks up a Dragon Flying Pokemon. We can, we can argue that's a Burp Pokemon, but hey, dragons are pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. Nidoqueen, Nidoqueen is an incredible pick for where he got it. Then he picks up Noivern, which is another, another fast Pokemon. This thing's gonna break through, once again, more walls. He didn't need any more wall breakers. Uh, but Noivern's a fast Pokemon. It hits hard. It has access to Hurricane, Air Slash. Uh, Draco Meteor, Dragon Pulse, even like Fire Blast and things like that. It can do a lot. It's also a U-turn in which it gives him some initiative to switch into Infernape, Nidoking, and potentially Mega Blastoise, which really, really, really does do some damage. So I'm, I'm so far, so far this is a nice, this is a good team. Norbert is a beast. I don't know how he picked it up in this. So, <laughs> anywho, he picked up in RU1, the Aromatease, and this is an interesting Pokemon because it really depends on the battler and how they're using it. Um, Aromatease as a single doesn't really do much, it doesn't really bring you momentum, but depending on the team that you bring with it, it really can support the team. Um, I think Noivern was the better choice, Kyurem is a bit unpredictable in the Stealth Rocks and things like that. I know Noivern has Stealth Rocks too, but I think it was a better choice to go into Noivern. Noivern's a lot faster and does so much more. Uh, back to Aromatisse, anywho. <laughs> Aromatisse is one of those Pokemon that really depends on the team that you bring in. Um, it's not one of those mods that where you're just going to slap it on a team and it'll do work. It's one of those teams that really, or one of those Pokemon that really needs support from its supporting cast in order for it to be really, really good. So I'm really interested to see how this Pokemon performs and how it. Um, how it really, really does things and stuff like that. I know that's pretty specific, but Aromatis brings also Wish, Heal Bell. It's sort of a support clerk Pokemon, so there's that. And uh, I think Vade needed that too. So it was an incredible pick. It's a good pick. It's an it's a good pick. But then he picks up an annoying, annoying thing. A really, really. And this, this, this is gonna, this is gonna hurt when I say it. <sighs> I'm preparing myself. To say it, it is the Dusk Noir in his RU2 pick. This thing is one of the bulkiest, bulkiest Pokemon. This is one of the bulkiest Pokemon that you can ever meet in an RU2 pick. And I, as much as compliments his team, I don't see it really doing that much. I see it just being annoying and pesky. And it, like, I, I just. I don't, I don't appreciate this pick. I'm a bit bitter about it because it does a couple things and it does a couple things right, but in terms of it being a real huge momentum taker, it's not that thing. People are going to prepare for it. Um, it's another knockoff user, which is not not friendly. Invites a knockoff, and uh, yeah. So I don't. I just. I think Dust Noir is a good pick. I just don't, I'm gonna see how he uses it. The RU2, when, when you go to like RU and below, it really depends on what the team that they brought in and how they're gonna use it. So uh, we'll move on to his final pick. Uh, we'll move into his final RU3 pick, which is the Reggie Rock. And I think this was one of the picks that he's just like, you know what, I need a Rock type Pokemon. one. Reggie Rock is still around, I'm gonna bring it. And uh, we'll see how it works out. Yeah, yeah, Dust Noir is, is uh, well, it's pretty close to Registeel's equivalents in terms of uh, bulk and whatnot. 
So uh, I can I can I can see that I can see that. But we'll move on to Reggie Rock. Reggie Rock is one of these Pokemon that I think that he, wasn't necessary. He just needed a Rock type Pokemon. And it's great coverage. It adds different resistances to the team, and people do have to prepare for it. Uh, Reggie Rock is one of those Pokemon that's a swing and a miss for me, though. Either you you knock it out of the ballpark, and people are like, "Wow, man, that's an incredible mon," or most of the time it's just there and it's just doing. Something, something like that, but not that much. Not that much. It's not gonna do that much. So uh, Reggie Rock adds another Stealth Rocker to this team. Uh, that being Mew, Reggie Rock, Nidoqueen, and that's that's uh, that's it. But he also brings in the Kecleon, which is his number one pick. And this is a pick that I felt the whole league felt really, really, really felt just because this Kecleon has so much history with this. New York team, that being that it never, it got drafted in the final round in last season, and that really, that was a heartbreaker, that was a heartbreak, a lot of people felt that, and you know what, it's, it sucks, but now Kecleon is in the New York Kecleons, and they finally found financial budget in bringing in this, inc this incredible protein mon. Kecleon also adds another Stealth Rocker, which is great, uh, he can run Stealth Rocks on multiple things, and... Kecleon is one of those, it's it's a bit unpredictable. Yeah, Kecleon is home. Hashtag Kecleon is home. Uh, anywho, Kecleon is one of those mods that really, really can be unpredictable. Um, depends really how Vade wants to run this Kecleon. It has access to recover, uh, to priority, just where I was going to get to. Um, in terms of where it is, it's also got really incredible special defense. I remember going against this thing with Vade in one of my very first battles, and this thing was annoying. I didn't know how to really, really go around it. So if anyone can bring out the full potential on Kecleon, and if Kecleon wants to perform for his home team, uh, this is the place to do it. This is the time to really do it. So I'm really going to look forward to how Vade uses Kecleon as his number one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I that battle scarred me for life, Aid. It really did. It's just, oh man, oh man, Trick Room Kecleon, exactly. And uh, it also has Power Up Punch, so it's Bulk, Power Up Punch, Recover, Priority 2, Shadow Sneak. It can do a lot of things and it can be really, really annoying, so there's that. And then he picks up the Dino, and... Boy, do I know a thing about a thing or two about a Dino. I love this pick. I love where it is. And this is one of the This is a genuine snag. This is this is an incredible pick just because a Dino does so many things and Sucker Punch too. Like like the picture that Vade had. Uh